open it up for discussion. Uh, yeah, I, my only suggestion is that we might want to structure it a little bit. So if uh, everybody is agreed, I think there are uh, two or three different distinct issues that need to be discussed. Uh, first of all, I think we need to discuss the uh, fundamental philosophy underlying this document. Not because there's going to be, uh, at least in this group, serious differences with it, but we might want to state it a little less or more explicitly. I think there are issues and I'd like to point out a few for the discussion. The second is that we might want to just briefly talk about the structure of the document sure. because it sort of tends to run in a particular way, should we structure it better. And then I think third, we can get down to specific points that people might have a difference of opinion with it. Now, I just uh, want to kick it off because I think I have to play some role as a chair out here, so let, let me do that. Uh, let me start by saying that the impression, and I haven't been here the last few days, so maybe I'm misunderstood, but the impression is that it comes across slightly confused in the overall philosophy because we start by saying that, look, uh, the primary role of rivers is like an ecosystem and so on and so forth. But then we go on to concede that, yes, you can have dams and you can have this, you can have that. Now, my point is this, that let's make up our mind one way or the other and then put it across clearly like that. Because otherwise what will happen is in this document, people will nitpick those who are against this particular thinking and say, Sir, ye these are people who want to stop everything in reverse, so why bother about it and so on. I think the spirit of the document suggests that, look, that must be the primary consideration. But rivers have carrying capacities. They've historically supported human activities, and they can continue to support human activities as long as they are done in an appropriate manner within certain bounds. So you might want to, the, the group might want to think of putting that initial, the first paragraph should put our philosophy across in both a balanced and an unambiguous manner so that people cannot use it against the document, as you well know, tends to happen. The second point about the structure is that I think we need to uh, put it into threats and issues. I think at the moment, many things are running together. So I think, uh, for example, the first broad head could be uh, use of river flow and diversion of flow. So all the issues involved with that, which would include dams, run of the river, etc. The second could be extraction of water and other resources, which would also, I don't know whether you covered it, but the whole problem of over extraction for municipal use, etc., would also get covered. But sand certainly and various things like that. Third could be the whole pollution issue that you talked about, and you might want to separately talk about industrial, agricultural, uh, municipal, and even siltation uh, sort of thing that are happening now. <coughs> Then we could talk about the sources and catchments as one thing. I, I don't know, again, maybe I missed it, but I think there's probably much more that needs to be said about catchments of uh, rivers and their sources, because if we are not going to safeguard the sources of water, then I'm not sure we're going to you know, get somewhere. And then, of course, mouths and basins and things like that. So I'm just suggesting, I'm not going into specific issues, I'm just suggesting for your consideration these two points. One is to put across a more a cohesive and a, uh, sort of uh, balanced uh, viewpoint in the initial stages so that that sets the tone for the document. And the second is to think of uh, organizing it in a way in which it becomes a little easier for somebody to pick up what interests them. Before I open it up, would you like to say something? Huh? I would like to add, and uh, you also mentioned, uh, the, I think we need to uh, put uh, clearly specify we have missed that slightly maybe or we have not emphasized it to the point that the uh, other than the main river the uh, the other uh, natural sources which are feeding the rivers they are very very important it could be a small nala it could be a small stream it could be other rivulets and uh, they are equally important and they also need a uh, lot of attention Thank you. So I'll open it up now. Let me uh, be a leftist to start from here. So I'll start from here and then come around. Uh, sir, I have to leave uh, immediately. All right, so let him just speak, then we'll come back. Sure. I have no more ready to leave, but... Sure, sure, no problem. Uh, I agree that it needs restructuring, and you will probably take care of the restructuring and uh, reordering of the point. 
two things which uh, I don't think appear very explicitly here relate to the biodiversity conservation as such, though ecological word appears many times, and very many biodiversity concerns, then the upstream, downstream linkages right up to the water flowing to the coastal areas, the coastal fisheries and mangroves, and thirdly, some reference to the concern that all these uh, human actions are going to be impacted by the climate change and that scenario has to be kept in mind. So with these uh, three, four... Uh, yeah, somebody is noting them I down. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So I have to go to the NDT. See, see, I have two quick points. Uh, one is with regard to that we don't want to make assessment of certain intervention which we will not allow into the river we should specify. One is like in the name of riverfront, there are lots of structure coming in and like Statue of Unity coming in the bed of the river Navada, we don't want to make assessment at all. We, we want to say specifically we, will, we don't want to discuss those intervention at all. It should be rejected prima facie, not in the name of making assessment whether the river front will have a what impact and whether it will take care of or that or not, or the statue of unit will have an impact or not. We should say very straight clearly, which we had discussed in our group, that we will not allow that intervention in the river. That is one. Second, there is a, a, a notion which says that when river flows into the sea is a waste of water. So we should say somewhere very specific because that was the notion in the mind of the people, also in the state. We should clearly state that this is, this, this is not the understanding which we would allow to uh, state to look into that way. Thank you. Uh, As, as you mentioned, uh, the words uh, confusing and worrisome worried me too. Uh, we shouldn't start with such a negative and a strong... Oh, uh, virtually you have opened fire from the beginning. Uh, let, us, uh, let us start gradually. Okay. The other thing is, the term run of the river is uh, technically very wrongly used. Taking out water and then putting it 10 or 20 kilometers down is still not run of the river, which is being done in hydroelectric project. So we should make it very clear that this term has been grossly misused. Third is that the term healthy river comes up in the text without defining at all what you mean by a healthy river. Do you want to leave it to common sense or would you like to give some more uh, details about it? Next is the use of word commons repeatedly. Commons is a property and uh, for being used and only mistake is it is overused. But uh, we don't want to treat Ganga at least as a property to be used. So that word, use of word is taking us in a very different direction. Next is this uh, term uh, or demand for river regulation zone. Now we are again falling into the trap of regulation and hoping that regulation will clean our resources or conserve them. Uh, that is probably not a very, uh, very reliable approach. Uh, so we should, uh, instead of that, have a, a different approach to ensure the conservation and protection of our resources. Uh, if you allow me one more minute on this particular point, we have to very clearly say what we want to see Ganga as. We want to see it as a living system, then we have to give it the same protection we give to forests. We want to treat her as a mother, then we have to give her the same protection as is given to a lady under the Indian Penal Code. No molestation, no touching, no rape, nothing. Or if we want to treat it as the national symbol, then we have to give it the same respect that we give to national flag. No possibility of any insult or uh, disregard. So that way we have to be very clear how we want to look at Ganga rather than just as commons. Then there is a word, Siva treated or untreated. Siva is not treated, nor untreated. Sewage is treated or untreated. One point I will like to bring into this is that we should make it very clear that there is absolutely no justification in flushing the toilets 
with what is supposed to be fresh water or what was supposed to be supplied for drinking. So it should be quite mandatory that toilets will be flushed only with treated waste water. And that's about all. Thank you very much for Thank time. You. I'll just come. Uh, I, I think the, uh, the original plan that uh, you had Sir. Is, a, is a good one. If we, can, we can go pairwise from the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there are a whole lot of points as we, uh, as we go along. We'll, uh, the whole house will discuss it and then we can correct it on the spot. Uh, in general, <clears throat> I feel that uh, we should give much greater respect to our river. That should be included somewhere in the introduction. And, and bring out the fact that uh, now research has shown uh, in some of the advanced countries like Japan and Germany that rivers do have some, something like a, their own individuality and soul. The Japanese have gone to the extent of saying that they, are, they, they speak. They are, they are talking. When they are in pain, they, they, they come out and, and they, they say this. Uh, those papers have not been included in our discussions, but they would be very good technical papers. Uh, <clears throat> the other technical papers which I have recommended earlier is Dr. Zhang's paper on recharge of groundwater. I feel we should include that uh, because uh, that will bring us to the question of the flows. And people have used all sorts of terms, uh, environmental flow and minimum flow and all sorts of, which are not scientific. Uh, nobody has defined environmental flow. But, but here is a, a, a scientist who has not only done work in his laboratory, he has done field work. Dr. Zhang's uh, work has, I mean, published in 1993, that paper has been uh, endorsed by 50 other papers published in the Hydrology magazine of Amsterdam. So I think uh, in the introduction we can say the river is a soul. Uh, the holy rivers are worshipped as a, uh, as a uh, sublime soul or, or a holy, uh, holy entity. And uh, we should recognize historically a couple of things. For instance, <clears throat> the first canal in the world in, in uh, 1500 BC was made in India. But it was not a canal from lean season flow. It was not a canal which was uh, from uh, the now monsoon months. It was meant to carry monsoon water. N normally, the, our country has been formed in such a way that the monsoon uh, <coughs> causes overflows and fills uh, tanks and gilles all over the uh, basins. Where this, these do not exist. That is the only place where you possibly can take out <coughs> monsoon water. And this was done in the old days not by uh, barrages, but through anicuts. The French were the first to recognize this in India in, uh, in the 17th, 18th century. And they called it anicut. <laughs> but actually, uh, the word is an anicut, and it is not a barrage extending right across the river. <coughs> it, is, it, it is from the flood plains where the river becomes full in the monsoon and you take that water out. So only monsoon water or excess water is taken out from the river and it goes to places which do not have their own gilles and tanks. <coughs> the, the, uh, the process which the river uh, you know, helps us achieve is the uh, recharge of groundwater. <coughs> Dr. Jean's paper which I have referred to earlier uh, <coughs> points out that the recharge takes place in the lean season. When there is heavy monsoon, then the, the, it, it, is, it is repelling. The, 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 a top aquifer comes into play, which repels water from going in the, into the ground. But during the lean season, it keeps on the seepages, the process of seepage is very beautiful. And <coughs> uh, according to his calculations and graphs, which he has given in his paper, uh, about 70%, 70 to 75% of water, lean season flow, is essentially to be maintained. If you don't maintain the 70 to 75% lean season flow, you are interfering with groundwater recharge, you are causing problems for, our, for ourselves. So, <clears throat> basically I feel that the original way in which this, uh, our rivers ran was very beautiful.
problems started uh, uh, arising when we started having big cities, mega cities, and it is there only that we are having these problems basically. And <coughs> if uh, as we go along, uh, we will yeah. take the other 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 points. Can I? We'll come back. To we'll that. come back. Yeah. As we go along, we'll come. Can, 